like to ask everybody to close your eyes for a second. So what comes to your mind whenever you hear the expression Brazilian people or simply Brazilians? Now please open your eyes. To an international audience, this answer often boils down to people dancing samba, playing football, capoeira, or carnival, sexy women wearing G-string bikinis and feather headdresses. Depending on how old you are, the soccer player Neymar Jr., Ronaldo, or Pelé, or even the actress Carmen Miranda might come to your mind as well. Now, by coincidence, all these images involve the specialized dynamic of movement, bodily swing. In Brazil, the swing action is commonly known as ginga. In fact, ginga is the key ingredient within a logic or system of bodily organization connected to the African heritage in Brazil. There are many dances and games that are centered in this aesthetic. Now, why is it that a nation with over 200 million people came to be identified by the way it moves instead of its language or ethnicity? And this leads us to a more important question to articulate identity through motion. And more, can the way we organize our bodies to move influence also the way we think and act in society? These are some of the questions I'm going to try to answer today. So growing up in Brazil, I learned many types of dances. In classical ballet class, I learned to rotate my hip outwards and imagine my torso as a unit that moves upward, defying gravity. I learned to create soft lines that move outward from my limbs, tracing geometrical lines in space. When we danced, beauty meant upward linearity, precision, and weightlessness. But to dance samba, I had to break away from that system. I had to learn to twist and turn my hips and to articulate offbeat dialogues with other parts of my body, especially my feet. I learned to imagine my torso with multiple centers capable of articulating more than one rhythm at a time. When we danced, beauty meant sinuosity, syncopation, and improvisation. Well, similar to the turnout position in ballet, the hip swing in jinga and in samba is an acquired technique. It is not part of my genetic code, and anybody can learn it. However, contrary to ballet, originally from Europe, the jinga aesthetic is an Africanist aesthetic. Of course, not every Brazilian knows how to play capoeira or dance samba. However, over time, the Jinga aesthetic has impregnated many aspects of Brazilian arts and culture, from dance to samba, to soccer, to visual arts, to literature, to urban architecture, and urban planning. Well, since the 1970s, many scholars have turned their attention to the relationship between movement and cognition. At that time, the German philosopher Wilhelm Flusser was living in Brazil, where he began to articulate a general theory of gestures. For Flusser, the gestures are the departure point for the constructions of mental processes. Instead of considering language as the base of our thought and communication, he proposed that the way we relate to our bodies is key to understand how we orient ourselves in the world and make sense of it. In fact, our bodily actions, such as the way we move and talk, influence both how people perceive us as well as our own perception of reality. And when a particular... When a particular community decides to connect to one set of aesthetic values as that which is considered beautiful. 
those aesthetic values also end up organizing how they move across and think about the world. More recently, dance scholars have also recognized that the way we move around the world can also influence our daily actions. So I want to come back now to samba. As I said before, under the Jinga aesthetic, the, the body is imagined as an organism with more than one center, or polycentric, capable of articulating more than one rhythm at a time. That is, polyrhythm. The polycentric and polyrhythmic body is actually a fundamental principle in this Africanist aesthetic principle, movement system. To make things clear, today I have identified three main characteristics. First, we have the feet. They work as propellers and pacemakers. They dislocate the weight of the body in time and space, oftentimes marking the basic rhythm in a syncopated arrangement. Then we have shoulders and hips that act as pairs of scales, like those you see in the farmer's market. They act as independent centers, arranging the weight of the body from one side to another. Lastly, we have the spine, imagined here as a vertical, flexible axis. It connects the two pairs of scales, also transferring the weight for up and down. In samba, for example, the feet marks the two by four, while the hips sway in and out of rhythm with the basic riff. Here, the torso is not a unit, but it's fragmented into multiple parts that can either move together or stand apart. This structure leads us to another aesthetic principle, which I call the serpentine pathways. This principle privileges round twists, circular pathways, and spiral shifts. In capoeira, for example, to move like a snake is not only beautiful to watch. When it's well done and at the right time, the serpentine pathways work as tactics to avoid direct confrontation or contact, or simply to distract, disorient, the other player. In capoeira, Angola, the movement might be over here. And when you mix the serpentine pathways with uh, polyrhythms, you might get something like this. Well, over time, Brazilian soccer players have imported this sinuous way of moving and they have transformed over time this European sport using serpentine pathways, they transform into a beautiful game. The two examples that I have um, demonstrated here today so far, they discuss the form of the Jinga aesthetic. However, there are other set, of, other set of aesthetic principles that are connected to the intention of the movement. A good example of this is the concept of serious play. For the West African people, such as the Yoruba, the concept of serious play, or ere, connotes actions that denotes a childlike state of being and privilege slippages, trickery, and ambiguity. Likewise, across the African diaspora, the concept of serious plays puts emphasis on joy, vitality, playfulness, derision, and signifying. Of course, serious plays should not be understood as something irrational or illogical, and definitely not in opposition from work. Serious play is a productive principle, a way to maneuver in society and transform reality. So in order to demonstrate this, I would like to invite my friend, Marcio Nogueira, to the stage. Yeah. 
Valeu, Márcio. Márcio Nogueira. The writer Rui Castro once said, the Jinga is a way of not taking life too seriously and facing your problems with a play of hips, heels, and feet. Together, the polycentric and polyrhythmic body, the serpentine pathways, and serious plays amount to an embodied logic of organization that has been cultivated in Afro-Brazilian communities since colonial times. Of course, there are many other aesthetics that I haven't talked about today, such as call and response and coolness, not too hot, not too cold. In Brazil, people from many backgrounds have been cultivating and maintaining this Africanist system alive as they play, work, dance, make art, make do, or simply walk with a personalized swagger. The Jinga aesthetic has become a strong element in their identities. Despite oppression, the Jinga aesthetic has been used even in processes of cultural resistance, connecting blackness to beauty, pride, and dignity. So next time you meet people out there in the world, don't be too quick to judge them solely by the way they look or what they say. Step back and observe how they use their bodies. And remember, movement, not looks, is the window to the soul. Thank you. <laughs>